Hey, it's Maria Melito from Q104.3 Radio in New York City, and I am very happy to host the 2023 World Suicide Prevention Day benefit on Sunday, September 10th at the Bowery Electric in New York City. We're going to have amazing performances and information and just so many things happening and amazing artists like the great Dave Haas, who's here with me now. So, Dave, you are on board. We're very, very happy to have you performing that night. I'm very happy to be performing. It's funny you say that I'm on board because we just played Manhattan uh, on a ship. So we we, ah. we we did one of those boat cruises uh-huh. uh, that goes around the island and out to the Statue of Liberty. We just did that last week. So I was on board for that show in New York City, and I'm on board for this show. Exactly. Uh, so look at that. And then in between, I know you're going out on tour very soon, correct? Yeah, actually, I think we 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 do the bulk of the touring after the September 10th show. We we do a whole West Coast run starting in Los Angeles and ending mm-hmm. in Angeles, uh, after the after uh, the 10th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and in between now and then, we do have a couple performances around Labor Day, just some festival performances, and um, we always keep fairly busy. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As a working class musician, you have to. Right. No, I get it. But well, I also, I also yeah. get to, you know, it's I, I mm-hmm. love an array of different challenges and different types of shows and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's it's uh, just enough work to keep the lights on and keep us um, engaged in, in the process. Right. Right. And you have a new album out to support yeah. as well. Right. Yeah. We, we It's called Drive It Like It's Stolen. It came out mm-hmm. at the of april and um we haven't done a ton of touring on it because we uh we in philadelphia that's where we're from my brother Mm -hmm. and i are from there and we write the songs together and perform together and um we did our own festival in philadelphia in may so we sort of pointed most of our northeastern fan base towards that event Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was so much of a lift to get it up and, and running and all the work and 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 time and sacrifice we put into that, that we we kept our calendar a little bit lighter this year than we ordinarily do with a new record out. So I'm excited to get out and, and play the songs um, on the new record because I really believe we've made a a, a a great record or a record mm-hmm. that I really that really is representative of where I'm at. And uh, and so it's exciting to to be a couple months away from the release now and still get to kind of present it for the first time to people. Sure. And and how do you feel? Is it different than your past records or? I think, I mean, that was what the prevailing response was, that it's different, uh-huh. that there's new textures, there's new sonic things going on, which I, I think they're, I think people are correct. I uh-huh. mean, the germ of the songs, though, to me, always comes back to, you know, playing it on this. And uh-huh. so... Uh-huh. Um, I didn't, I guess I didn't write as much of the record on acoustic guitar as I have in the past. I wrote it a lot on bass and I used uh, different loops and stuff in my home studio here to get it going. But the germ of the songs, in other words, when we perform in New York City for for, for this event, um, it'll be more or less acoustic. It'll be stripped down. It'll be just me and my brother. Mm-hmm. And that's how I always conceive of the song. So I don't think of them as all that different. But yes, sure. we presented them differently in the studio. I wanted to get uh, the sound that was going on in my head for the record onto tape. And so we were a little bit more um, fearless in our approach on the recording side. And, and it was really fun. I mean, it's, uh, it's a new set of paints that we got out for this record. And it was, it was great to be able to paint that way. I like that description. I never heard that before. A new set of paints. That's perfect. No, but that's, you know, you're an artist. That makes, that's, you know, that makes perfect sense. A lot of my favorite um, artists, they they, they did a lot more reinvention from record to record to record um, than I think is, is common these days. Um, so if you think of David Bowie or you think of um, Elvis Costello or Leonard mm-hmm. Cohen or, I mean, I guess Taylor Swift does a, a good amount of reinvention between albums, but um, it's more on the pop side now. The rock side seems pretty, pretty straight mm-hmm. ahead. 
we are a rock band. These are our new rock songs. <laughs> and I think, um, that's fine. I, I understand right. it's kind of a survival mechanism, I think, in, in the business. But for me, I, I just, I bore easily. Um, and I think I'd like to, moving forward, continue to, like, to till new sonic ground record mm -hmm. to record, to keep myself on my toes and and to keep the audience on their toes you know i think it's it's fun if you if you're if you allow yourself that uh palette um and people get on board it, it's fun you can kind of yeah. get into new territories sure and it, i think it also makes it so that you're never bored right it continues to be a challenge for you and you want that as an artist so I it keeps so. you challenged yeah. too. You want to push just enough for people right. to go, okay. And maybe right. the first pass they go, I don't know. And then the song sticks enough to their ribs that that uh, the way it's presented becomes like a, a spice. Right. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And in fact, I want to ask you, because since you are performing on World Suicide Prevention Day on the benefit that's happening on September 10th, uh, I was reading an interview and one of the cuts on your new album, New Year's Day, New York City, 2042. And you mentioned about mental health in that in that song. So tell me a little bit about that. Um, that song was sort of we I think coming back from pandemic um, in 2022, we were touring on my former record, Blood, Blood Harmony. Mm hmm. And we had to delay the touring on that record a little bit. Um, and as we emerged and started to play major cities, New York City being one of them, um, it looked like a bleak picture. I had mm -hmm. also stopped taking my SSRI before I went on. On I was working out and feeling really good. And I did something that is a common error in mental health. I'm mm -hmm. feeling good, so I'll take away right. um, the pill. Sure. And I got out on tour and the practices on tour, you, you eat sporadically, you sleep sporadically, all a lot of the pillars of my mental health were pulled out. And by the time we got to New York on that tour, um, I was pretty depressed and, and the show felt bleak. It was a rainy night. Um, we've had a lot of triumph in New York City, and that night, you know, people were just still maybe not sure about coming out. And sure. So I was sort of looking at the city, um, and and essentially the American city through the prism of like, wow, it's not looking good. You know, we we're in a tight spot here uh, as Americans, or or you know, and and that's kind of what I was going for with that song. Was like, well, what what's going to ha what's going to be the view of things in 20 years you know if it looks like this now sure it's just sort of a quick you know it's three minutes of, of of trying to perceive of that and then try to respond that's why the coda on the song is um take one last bite of the old rotten apple and ride out to the country with me um so it's perfect <laughs> end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the end of the story entirely the hope is I that um it doesn't end up like that but that's that was the feeling at the time um but yeah i mean generally speaking i've struggled with my mental health um over the years and and struggled with addiction and and um struggled with you know suicidal ideation and 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 you know manic depressive swings and things like that and and uh, so I'm very thankful for the various forms of self-care and help that I've gotten. I've lost friends uh, to sure. suicide. We all have, you know, it's right. uh, so I'm very much um, engaged with that whole. I mean, my wife's also a therapist. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm in therapy. She's a therapist. It's a therapist kind of house. Well, no, of course, that helps. <laughs> that really yeah. does help. Yeah. So, yeah, I find that stuff to be, those are really common threads in my work over the years. Um, I just think it's one of those things where long term, if you're a sensitive person, which I think a lot of us are, mm -hmm. um, the rate at which the world is coming at us with technology and, and just all of the the modern, the modern life that we're all trying to share in, um, you would almost be 
crazy to not be crazy. In other words, I know that those terms are kind of like outdated. No, but I know. No, I know what you mean, though. How could you not be? It's overwhelming with yeah. the, the world is social media. Like think of the world before social media. Social media is a good thing, but it's also a very bad thing. Right. And I think you know? every other American um, American thing, you know, it's tainted by a long history of grift mm -hmm. and and, uh, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, for every omelet that we make in this country and as humans and as a species, there's eggs that get cracked. And I think that um, often those are human beings, uh, you know, that are grist for that mill. So I, I think inevitably, if you're tuned into that, mm -hmm. you're going to struggle, um, your mental health is going to struggle. And Absolutely. so... Um, and mine has over the years, you know, like I'm on a, hopefully a much steadier roller coaster now because uh, I have two four and a half year old twins. And so I mm -hmm. think I have even more of an impetus for, you know, keeping my mental health steady. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's tough. It's, it's really hard work. Um, it's, it's tied yep. in with physical health. It's, I mean, our diet's crazy in this country. So Sure. You know, trying to to hack your way through the melee towards any kind of peace is is a is kind of a full time job. It is no, it's true. I think it's a challenge, and I think it's a challenge for anyone, regardless of their age, of their job, you know sure. what they do, uh, whether they live alone, they have a large family. I mean, I think it's it's a constant, and yeah. I. Right. I just think I just feel like like I don't think it's something our parents. I'm sure they had their fill of it, but in a different way than it is today. You know, yeah. I think with technology and everything, I just think it's very different. I think with our parents, um, there was clearly mental health issues and there was, there sure. was they, had, they didn't have a lot of the same language, a lot of the same studies, a lot like there's been an advent of mental health awareness in, in my lifetime that's gone yeah. from you know, into a really much better place. Sure. However, I also think the world was slower. It was a little bit slower. Yeah, um, definitely technology, social media, all that other stuff, but also mm -hmm. the working class uh, ladder was still mm -hmm. kind of intact for a lot more people when I was mm -hmm. a kid. You could yeah. be a working family with one income and buy a suitable home and live in a decent neighborhood in America. Correct. And, uh, little did we know the powers yeah. that be were, were erasing all that in the 80s so that, you know, by the time I bought a house, in the early 2000s in suburban Philadelphia, that was sort of the last bell ringing for like, oh, you can buy a house for 150 grand. Right, um, right. Now it's just, it's great. Yeah. yeah. So I think our parents also were allowing the rug to be pulled out from all of us politically. Right, um, you without know, realizing it, I think. We're seeing the repercussions of that now. So it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. And I think it's a lot of pressure on people. And I think, you know, as a result. So. Okay. So since we are on the subject of mental health, so are there things that you do to prepare before you go out on tour? Because that in itself is stressful. You know, you're away from your family, your norm, all the like the constants. There are. Um, I think increasingly I I do a lot of those ahead of time in terms of how we approach touring. So there are the normal things of, you know, breathing is key, how mm -hmm. you uh, reset your, your um, physiology, you know, I think going on stage, getting off of stage, those are things where tons of dopamine is rushing at you. And, you know, you're trying to be this like superhero version of yourself. And so um, trying to deal with that with with breathing is is a key thing hydration is key like these are fundamental building blocks of your day but a lot of people are unaware as to their power and you know sleep is key but mm -hmm. as far as touring um we spend a lot of time going through and saying well what are, what are our plans for the year mm -hmm. and so a lot of the touring that we do as an enterprise is just me and my brother so and sometimes we bring a keyboard player and so we keep it uh, really tight, mm -hmm. not a lot of people, not a lot of interaction with, you know, we, we trim the fat for financial reasons, but then also just for our mental health. That's sure. a key thing for when we're not in places where we can kind of afford the band. We don't mm -hmm. put ourselves in that situation as, as, 
as performers. Then when we have the band, it's really clear that, you know, that we have the financial wherewithal to support them and pay them like a proper wage. Um, so, so again, a lot of that has to do with like how we're going into it and going like, Hey, we have a place to sleep. We don't go sleep on people's floors. We don't do any of that stuff anymore. I mean, I'm 45 years old. So it's, it's, uh, those self-care things are really clutch. I also kind of approach (laughs) going into social situations, um, more carefully, you know, in other words, like if I'm going to the East coast, I know we're playing New York city, Boston, Philly, any of those places. I got a lot of friends. Sure. And it's a wonderful blessing, but I'm also at work. So I'm very careful about the guest list and, and being overly social. I don't want that to take away from the show. Um, so it's just, you know, it's sort of looking at the week ahead and going, like, what are we really looking at here? How much extrovert uh, tickets mm-hmm. are demanded of me? Right. And, okay, I think I'm going to have to put that lunch off or I'm going to have to put that... Sure. Inter- you know, so some of that is, is, is that's kind of the approach that, that helps me stay more steady on, on the road. Yeah. Which I also think is probably that's good advice for anyone in their everyday life. Like, don't, like you say, how you plan for the week ahead. Yeah. Um, I think that whole feeling of getting overwhelmed, feeling overwhelmed because, you know, how many times you try to do so many different things. I, so my, I wish I had three arms because I'm trying to do so many different things. So I think that's key even for just a- anyone, whether it's they're going out on the road. But in particular, I think ambitious people, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's ambitious to say we're going to play this show and hope 500 people come or whatever, right. whatever the goal is. Those are all little ambitions. And so often that sense of overwhelm is your own doing. It's mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, like, going, always oh, the thing to do, but you know, oh, sure, I can fit dinner in, and sure, you, you know, we could have a VIP section, and we'll go out and talk to them. It's like, at some point, you realize like you've overbooked yourself. Exactly. And the one thing you're there to do is to connect with people through music, and that's sure. the actual job. And so sometimes that that comes at a disadvantage. I mean, the way I toured as a younger man uh, was just crazy. I mean, the mm-hmm. amount of alcohol and drugs and 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 just everything you know interaction Mm -hmm. with people and too much of everything too much of everything excess Um, (laughs) yeah i would would get into Francisco or new york city and want to have um this idealized you know night while we're in los angeles or whatever that was right right okay but the, yeah. if, if that takes away from the actual thing that you're there to do, then it was all for naught. And, Correct. and so it's a lot of like balancing that kind of yeah. energy. Yeah. Trying to get into a place of like, okay, the people that are here paid to be here. I moved heaven and earth to get into this town. Sure. Let's the most out of this exchange from, from here, the song to the people and back. That's the point. The rest of it is all extra. Yeah. And I think, again, you just gave another good piece of advice. It's like keeping it balanced. You know, don't take on too much, keeping it balanced, plan ahead. And you also said something key before, and I think it's good for everyone to know for mental health is sleep. Yeah. Right. Naps and sleep. Very important. Right. Do you take a lot of naps when you're on the road? I wish I, I oh. really I've always struggled with sleep. I've always struggled with naps. Um, okay. I get, I wake up disoriented from a nap. I don't know where I am. So I'm like, ah, you know, and so, uh, unless I'm really like in the front seat of the van or the bus or whatever we're traveling in and I sort of doze off, I sometimes can do them, but I, I drink too much coffee okay. and, um, sleep has never come easy to me, but I am, really uh attempting to be more dedicated to it i've been trying to wind down do things that help me get to sit like put the phone down yes um, you know try to get seven seven hours my goal seven is good five, yeah you know like on tour which is crazy no which i yeah i get that but no but you know it's funny about you said about your phone because there's something about the the blue light or whatever it is even though you can put it on like a night light on it um, at a certain time, cause I started to do that, but still a lot of people, they look at, you know, you look at your phone and it does something that it keeps you awake and just, dis- and disrupts sleep. 
Yeah, I also just think that rate of information coming at any human brain, even if the blue light thing wasn't a factor, which it is, right. yeah, that amount of pictures and you know, it's like it's not it's, a lot. The, it's not yeah. the place you want your mind when you first wake up, nor before you go to bed. You want to kind of like land the plane slow and take off. Slow. <laughs> exactly. That <laughs> that we're so conditioned to get is not good. You know, it's not. Yeah not the best it's true so if someone came up to you who was you know a teenager and said i want to be just like you dave uh what's one good piece of advice you'd give them drink water nice. <laughs> drink that's a very lot good of water. though <laughs> water's very good for you that's a good piece of advice <laughs> A broken record with everyone I know. That, oh, I, I got a pain in the neck, or I got this, or and I go, "Are you drinking water? Did you have your pro?" You know, because but it is true though. It is. That was one of the first bits of advice I was working yeah, when I first went out on tour. I was working as a roadie for mm -hmm. a legendary New York City hardcore band called Sick of It All. Okay. Yeah, I you know I was real green, this little Philadelphia working kid, like oh, what, what you know, what what can I soak up and. I figured that the, they would give me like advice about performance or, you know, songwriting or whatever. And it was drink water. And, wow. and the bass player pulled me into the bus and was like, <laughs> he had water just lining his bunk. He's like, hey, this is how you do it for 20 years, kid, you know, and uh, they're still going. And right, I think see? Drink of look water. at that. <laughs> drink water. I wasn't expecting you to say that at all, but it's great advice because it's really true. People don't drink enough water. Well, you know, I mean, to have a more, you know, to tease out the point more, I mean, I think if, if you're trying to make art or you're trying to get famous or you're mm -hmm. trying, whatever the various things you're trying to do, everyone has a different agenda when it comes to doing this kind of work. But ultimately to keep that clear, to keep those wow. goals clear and, and apply all of your, um, all of your faculties to those goals, you have to be optimal performance. Correct. So if your goal is to get as close to your artistic vision as possible, you're gonna need to drink water. That's true, no, you're right. Famous, which is not necessarily my goal. You're definitely gonna need even more water. Um, <laughs> so that, that's more what it is. It's like, make sure your body and your mind are operating at their top capacity because this business, whatever part of it you're in, whatever your goal is, is really difficult. It's really hard on your emotional, spiritual, physical, um, and mental capacities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know what? It's like putting oil into an engine. Drink water. Drink water. It's perfect. <laughs> well, Dave, I thank you so much for your time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you and everyone on September 10th. And as a reminder, you can go to suicidology.org slash benefit to get your tickets and to donate. So, Dave, I look forward to seeing you on September 10th. And thanks for your time and your advice, too. Likewise. See you there. We're going to have a good time. We're going to, um, you know, we're going <clears> to <throat> give New York City a, a, a good night. Absolutely. A wonderful night. Yeah. Thanks. It's going to be great. Thank you.